I work a very rural area, and you all know I live in very conservative Idaho and western Wyoming. And um, let's just say that people are very protective uh, when it comes to their private property. Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds, it's the Appraiser Coach Podcast. Minisode. 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 All right, it's no secret I am not a fan of comp pictures. Yes, I've heard all of the arguments about why they're a good idea. (laughs) Frankly, all of that sounds just like heavier on uh, Fiddler on the Roof. You know, it's it's all about tradition. Tradition. Uh, speaking of tradition, what is your tradition when it comes to managing your appraisal office? Is it time to maybe break out of that? Uh, check out ANAL software, which will allow you to be able to get back to the job of running your business and not having to crunch all the numbers. ANAL software will help you do that. ANAL.com slash coach is the address. It's ANAL.com slash coach. All right, folks. I want to tell you a story, a true story happened to me yesterday. Um, by the way, I'll just tell you the ending of the story I'll, uh, first before I even tell you the story. I'm fine. Nothing happened. Um, it was scarier than it actually turned out to be. But, uh, you know, this happens on a pretty regular basis. Um, I, li- I work a very rural area, and uh, you all know I live in very conservative Idaho and western Wyoming. And um, let's just say that people are very protective uh, when it comes to their private property. I was actually not taking comp pictures at the time. Uh, That came afterwards, but uh, I was trying to find the subject. Uh, The subject was in an interesting place. The GPS actually took me uh, to a place that uh, was was beyond the house. Um, Anyway, long story short, I was on a dirt road. I was in Wyoming. Um, I was off in the boondocks. I was on a county road. Uh, through most of it. But then I turned onto a private road, again, trying to find the subject. By the way, the subject was located on the private road. So by default, I had permission to be on the, uh, the, the private road. They were expecting me. But I slowed down. In fact, I actually stopped the car at a gate that I thought was the right property. The GPS had led me to this gate, and I'm, I'm trying to compare the numbers. And uh, there was still a lot of snow uh, so there was no county markers that were visible. They were uh, they were underneath the snow. Uh, I'm trying to figure things out. And uh, finally figured out I must be in the wrong place because I could see the house and it didn't match what what I expected. Um, but there were all kinds. I mean, it, just imagine this. I'm on, a, I'm on a dirt road. It's a private road. Uh, there's a gate, a cattle gate, um, a heavy gate. There's about three signs. Uh, about no trespassing, about, you know, the, we don't call 911 with a, with a picture of a gun. I mean, this is, this is standard fodder for, uh, for where I work. Uh, and there was, a, there was a camera. I could see there was a camera um, that was uh, pointed right at me, uh, which is fine, whatever. Uh, again, I stopped briefly. I looked. I, it took me 10 seconds to realize it was the wrong place, and I, and I drove on. And I drove up to the house uh, that was beyond this house, and I did my thing. I spent about 45 minutes in the inspection, very large, uh, luxury, custom-made home. Had a nice talk with the, uh, the individuals there. In fact, they mentioned their neighbors down the road. Uh, they said they're very protective um, and uh, to be careful. I said, well, you know, I don't have any beef with them. I'm, I'm not going into their property. Um, on the way back, I drove back past the property um, and I noticed there was an SUV in the driveway that was not there, pointed toward the road that was not there before. Uh, as I passed, I could see the gate come up, and I uh, noticed that the SUV, yes, it was black. <laughs> that doesn't make it more ominous. Um, and it followed me. And I thought, yeah, huh, this is interesting. This is interesting. Um, I thought back to the podcast we did with Blaine Fine about safety. And um, hats off to you, uh, Blaine. Good tips. And I thought, you know, where is the where is the closest police station? Because I'm certainly not pulling over for this guy, right? And I don't know how hairy this is going to get. 
Um, p- closest police station that I could think of was 40 miles away. And by the way, in the opposite direction of the direction that I needed to go. Uh, that being said, when I feel like my safety is at risk, I don't care where I need to be. Uh, my safety is number one priority. And um, I decided in my mind that I was going to head the 40 miles to the police station uh, and just park there and uh, just see what happened. Now, I had not done anything wrong. I, I had permission to be on the private road. I had not taken a picture of the of the house in question. I simply stopped, looked. Uh, I'm sure they saw me on the cameras. Who knows if they had motion sensors? I'm sure they probably did. Wondered what I was doing there. And uh, I'm, I'm assuming they tried to intimidate. I don't think that they were out for blood. I don't think they were out for, uh, for any, uh, any type of violence. Um, but it was scary. It was a scary situation. I'm alone out in the middle of nowhere. It was about three miles in on this, uh, on this dirt road. Uh, now I'll tell you the ending of the story. Um, by the time I got to the main county road, the uh, the vehicle in question had slowed down. And when I turned to go south, I was supposed to go north. When I turned to go south to head toward the the, the police station for my own safety, um, I noticed that the SUV was not following me anymore. Within a couple of miles, I did a U-turn and I headed north um, and uh, and made my next appointment without problem. Now, why do I bring up this story? Well, Dustin, you're just fine. What's the problem? Well, the problem is, folks, is is I think I think it's going to take, unfortunately, something very unfortunate happening before maybe some of these clients start to back off the whole comp picture thing. I think it's going to take, unfortunately, and I hate to say this, uh, a, a death or a, a very violent act, maybe more than one before the banks start to realize that it's very dangerous to be out there uh, doing what we're doing. And I know some of you are saying, well, Dustin, you weren't taking comp pictures. This could have happened. You know, it did happen. It happened while you were on your way to uh, an appointment. I get that. I get that. But folks, I've had very similar situations, uh, very scary situations, been chased down on more than one occasion uh, while I was out taking comp pictures. And I know a lot of appraisers who won't go into certain neighborhoods simply because to drive through and roll down your window and and stick your smartphone out and and start uh, shooting pictures is going to put you in a very precarious situation. You know what also is a precarious situation? Trying to run your business without a management software that will allow you to be able to save time. Folks, if you are not on A Now Software, I would highly, highly recommend, highly encourage that you take a peek at it and that you understand what it is that this actually does. This is not a spreadsheet, folks. This is a system which will allow you to be able to manage your appraisal business. What does that mean? That means all the numbers are in front of you so that you don't have to spend time crunching those numbers. You can simply go to the analytics tab. You can know exactly where you are, and you can make decisions as a business owner moving forward. Check it out. Go to anow.com slash coach. One more time, it's anow.com slash coach. All right, folks, we're back. We're talking about comp pictures today. And, and the story I told you was not to do with comp pictures, but it could as well. You know, I don't know what would have happened if I had pulled, you know, let's say this this uh, particular house was a comp. Let's say it was a sale. Um, now, some of you would say, well, Dustin, if it was, you should stop at the private road sign. I get it. And frankly, I do. Uh, and I don't care. I don't care how pressured I feel from the client to say, no, you need to get closer. We need to see the 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 uh, the house. If it's got a private road in Idaho, folks, I don't travel on it. I traveled on this one because it was the road to my subject, and I had paused and waited at a private road gate. Okay, uh, but that being said, I have been on public roads multiple times, county roads out in the boondocks that were public roads. Okay, taxpayer roads, uh, and I've been chased down. Uh, I have uh, I have had uh, very scary situations happen, and I know you have too. Uh, I know you have too because you've called me, you've emailed me, you've messaged me on Facebook and told me about these situations. Folks, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Now, I know all the arguments. I know all the arguments. You can't know the external factors. Uh, you certainly can't know if there's a high-powered high electric line above the property unless you drive it. 
Uh, and I've seen all the pictures on Facebook where the before, you know, here's here's the MLS picture and it looks like a nice little pretty house with a white picket fence. And then here's my comp picture and it's kind of zoomed out and you see the big water tower behind the house. I've, I've seen all that. OK, I, I get it. I do understand the need sometimes to uh, to drive comps. And uh, here's my argument. Here's my argument, folks. Uh, the liability is on the on the appraiser. Uh, if you haven't taken the time and the effort to understand the area and understand what is there and understand the situation and at least at some point drive the comps, right, then the liability is on you. If you miss the fact that the subject backs up to a Walmart, well, folks, you haven't done due diligence and that's on you. OK, but this idea that we're that, that we have to be that we have to be coddled as as professionals and say it's not only required. By the way, there's no requirement in USPAP to drive comps. None. There's no requirement in USPAP to take pictures of comparable sales. I know that shocks some of you because, well, gee, Dustin, I've been doing that from day one. I thought that's what we were supposed to do. Well, here, here's, here's the supposed to do. If your engagement letter with y your agreement between you and your client is that you drive comps, then you drive comps. Okay. If your agreement between you and your client is that you drive comps and take pictures of those comps that are up to date, that are as of the effective date or, or around the effective date of the subject. Guess what, folks? That's something you've agreed to. My encouragement today is more for the client side that they allow us to, as professionals, make that decision ourselves, whether that's needed. Now, I know, I know what you're saying. Well, Dustin, can't you just choose to not accept the order? Yeah, you can. You absolutely can. Okay. And that is, a, that is a choice that you need to make. My point today is to simply say that there are times that appraisers put themselves in jeopardy. There are times that appraisers put themselves at risk. And I think it's unnecessary. I've been in some scary situations that I look back on. I think, you know, no $450 fee is worth this. It just isn't. What do you say? I'd love to hear some feedback from you. Please jump on the forum down below. Give me some feedback or shoot me an email. The coach at theappraisercoach.com would love to hear from you. Would love to hear from you. Folks, I want to uh, encourage you to take a look at uh, my website. We've got all kinds of brand new content. Uh, if you'll go to theappraisercoach.com, check out the products page and just scroll down a little bit. You will see multiple webinars on any subject you can imagine. I get questions all the time about you name it, streamlining your appraisal office, hiring a, a virtual assistant, uh, you name it. If it's something that you have a question about, I'll bet you there's a webinar that addresses it. Check it out. Go to theappraisercoach.com slash products. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the all-star team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value.